Hey Gadget Groupies, the hunt for the perfect screen protector continues, but this right here was a nice step in the right direction. Eventually. You guys are gonna be so disappointed with me by the time I get through this story. I don't know how anyone's gonna take me seriously as a tech commentator after this one. Still do the video. Oh, okay. If you've been following any of my gadget videos, you know the issues I've been having with the recent collection of rounded glass smartphones, trying to find a way to protect that screen. And even when I try to protect my phone as much as I possibly can, it's the curved glass phones, which seem to burn through screen protectors. My daughter cracked the glass around the earpiece on a review unit of the V30, one of the pre-release models that we got. And since then, on my actual personal V30, I have gone through two other screen protectors. I do use my LG V30 pretty aggressively, and I'm loving this armor case from Zizo, but the included screen protector isn't the highest quality, and it's got this obnoxious rainbow modeling effect running right down the center. When it came time to start reviewing the LG G7, even though it doesn't have the same kind of obnoxious screen curve to the, uh, to the front glass, you can imagine I was very anxious about taking this glass on glass sandwich out into the field. Thankfully, the folks at Whitestone Dome took pity on me, sent me out a review unit to check out their screen protector technology. It's a whole science kit that you can use to install a glass screen protector with a liquid adhesive underneath to really tie all that together, keep it crystal clear, and give you a little extra bumper protection on that front face. Easy to install. Users can easily install the dome glass by using the installation jig <laughs> uh, included in the package. There are a ton of real-time installation videos. Whitestone Dome even includes some on their own YouTube channel so that you can see the installation process. So I'm not gonna bore you by doing a full step-by-step. -step. And the reason I'm not gonna bore you by doing a full step-by-step -step is because I went through this process four times before I finally got a good fit. In the kit, you get a full installation tray, little plastic guide so you can line up the foam properly, pads to absorb some of the liquid adhesive, and then this UV lamp, which sets all of this in place and makes it a pretty rugged installation. And Whitestone Dome is awesome for including not just one, but two adhesive bottles. And you would think that that would be enough for me to figure this out. I did try to shoot some video of this. Uh, first with my nice camera, I was gonna try and show you some really nice overhead video, get through all of the process, get that really crisp, pretty detail going on. Um, but by the time I got through the second installation and that had failed, I figured, hey, you know what? We're gonna switch over and do a time-lapse video instead. This is where I would highly recommend checking out some of the other installation videos, not only from Whitestone Dome, but from some of the other reviewers who've been getting their hands on this package. Not only for the successful installations, but also for some of the mistakes that people have made, especially on the G7, where I've noticed a couple reviewers fell into the same trap I did. So let's break this down by failure. Installation number one, just dumb user error. As you're pouring the adhesive onto the screen, you're not really supposed to mess with that adhesive. You're just supposed to lightly tip the phone until the adhesive runs to the middle of the phone, and then you drop the screen protector in place with the little key action. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't really read the instructions, and I was reading the instructions in the moment while trying to do this step by step because I thought I was a genius. I am not a genius. So after trying to manipulate the glass screen protector and smush all of that adhesive around, I'd realized that I'd probably made a catastrophic error. Peel the glass off, wipe everything down, get it all set back up in place. And for installation number two, this is where I have a criticism with the current packaging for the G7 version of the Whitestone Dome. Looking at these various installation guides, the one for the G7, Whitestone Dome has a lot of very important information in that video, but text on the screen usually flies by faster than you can actually read it in the moment. They're trying to show you that this installation can be done very, very efficiently. And they've got someone who's, who's used to doing this, so so they are moving through this process very quickly. But a few things can get jumbled up, and this is one of the killer errors that I've seen from several other reviewers. You're going through this process, and if you're looking at some of the guides, you'll see markers, top and bottom. There's a key where the glass screen protector is gonna fall into place, and there's a little tab, a little plastic adhesive tab, which is supposed to protect a speaker. The G7 is a nicely symmetrical phone, so it can go into this jig in either direction. I am not the only reviewer who has made this mistake where that plastic tab gets lined up on the bottom of the phone, 
not protecting the earpiece speaker under the notch. This is a dumb mistake to be sure, but I'm not the only one who's done this. On the guide, which plugs into the jig, you'll see the text bottom, and that lines up with where that tab goes, and you need to put the top of the phone under the guide that says bottom. If you put the bottom of the phone under the guide that says bottom, then the tab will actually be under your screen protector glass. The adhesive is gonna set around it. Then when you try and pull it out, you're gonna have a big gap on the bottom of the glass. And that's really hard to see when you look at the installation video because we're just dealing with a black slab of glass. So it's really difficult to get the exposure on that right. It's not really Whitestone Dome's fault, but we probably should have overexposed in that video so that you could clearly see that that tape was going where the notch cut out on the glass should live. So I cleaned everything off the phone for a second time. I write to my PR contact at Whitestone Dome, apologize profusely because their product is actually better implemented than this, but you do need to pay attention to some of those little details. To send out bottles three and four, they do send me out a whole second kit. I'm putting the phone back in. I've learned my lesson. I've watched those videos super closely on much larger, higher resolution displays, and I'm putting the phone in the right way only this time for installation number three, the new pads that I got lining the sides of the jig bowed out just ever so slightly. So when I'm putting the glass on top of the key and the adhesive is in place, I've rolled the phone, it's right in the middle, it's ready to drop. I pull the key and the glass gets stuck on the pad. I try and shift it, but by the time I've moved the phone and the jig enough to get the glass to fall past the pads, the adhesive has rolled off the side of the phone and is covering the back of my G7. I'm down to bottle number four. And the cleanup on this is kind of rough. This is definitely more of a science kit than most of your normal glass screen protectors. And this stuff smells pretty strong. So going through two bottles in one sitting in a very tiny office without the best ventilation, I'll get a little woozy. Reset everything again, clean off the phone, clean off the jig, get everything back in place put the phone back down, mash the pads into the sides of the phone so that I've got clearance for the glass screen protector, drop the next bottle, line it back up, and the screen protector falls right into place exactly like it should have. I finally get to use the lamp, go through the curing process, and everything's perfect. I'm actually pretty impressed by having this adhesive liquid process, curing process in place, that I would have expected this have more of an effect on light transmission or off angle viewing, but it does actually stay pretty clear. So I'm very happy with that. And swiping around the phone, moving through apps, sliding through the UI, everything seems to be pretty clean, pretty quick. I haven't noticed anything, uh, even for having extra material under the glass, haven't noticed any responsiveness issues with the touch sensors on the screen. Super early, it's the first day of having this screen protector installed, so I can't speak yet to the durability. This is gonna have to be an ongoing series between all of the different phones that I'm using, whether or not the Whitestone Dome can do better with my apparently really abusive lifestyle to gadgets in protecting the front glass on my phone screen. But at least for day one, it's already a better look than what I've currently got on my V30. A lot better than I was expecting it to be, but this is an installation process which requires more patience and more attention to details than your normal run-of-the-mill screen protector. And I really do wanna thank the folks at Whitestone Dome. After I had a problem with the installation, they were kind enough to send me out some extra adhesive and another glass screen protector to complete this process so that I could actually share these experiences with you fine folks and hopefully you won't make the same mistakes I did. And while most of this definitely was user error, there are a couple little details that I hope Whitestone Dome will address. One, in the presentation of their product when you look up information online, and two, in some of those little guiding details on the jig and the guides for the phone. Bottom should mean bottom. And of course, I'll have some links down below this video where you can find more info on the Whitestone Dome and uh, shop this puppy online in addition to other links below this video where you can help support production on this channel. Not the least of which would be checking out my Patreon campaign. The Patreon's been a pretty successful experiment in building another community where we can join like-minded individuals and have some more expanded tech conversations. It's also the future home of all of my camera and audio reviews. Just recently put out a video on the BlackBerry Key 2. If you want the full audio scoop on the LG G7, the amazing boombox speaker mode, the quad DAC, 
or what's going down with these dual cameras on the back of the G7 if they compare it to the V30, those videos are exclusive for Patreon subscribers. An awesome list of names flying by on the screen right now, people who have been supporting production. And of course, I want to thank everyone who's been supporting in other ways too. Not only subscribing and watching, but also commenting and sharing my videos. Again, every little bit helps. We're all in this together and we can make some really cool tech stuff if we work together. You know where you can find me around the rest of the internet at some gadget guy on the socials, and I will catch you all on the next review.